Hello, my name is Adam Clark. In this video, I'll be going over the Buchla 250E Arbitrary Function Generator. I'll go over all the major aspects of the module. Beyond this video, I recommend you download and review the 200E manual from Buchla.com to learn more. The 250E is a 16-stage function generator. It's divided into several sections. Stage array, stage loop and editing, mode, time, voltage, pulse outputs, stage addressing, and external inputs. For demonstration, I'm going to connect the 250E CV output 1 to the principal oscillator CV input on a 261E complex waveform generator to affect pitch. The principal oscillator audio output then goes to a mixer, in this case a 227E system interface. Currently, in the mode section, I have each stage set to advance. We'll cover this more in depth later, but it's important to understand now that some of the other modes do not automatically advance to the next stage. If you're following along and the mode section is not set to advance for each stage, Press the Edit button to enter the 250E Edit Mode, select Advance, and with the button still pressed, rotate the Center Edit Value knob through each stage to be edited, and those stages will now be set to Advance as well. This is an editing convenience that works for all parameters when in Edit Mode. Press the Edit button again to exit Edit Mode. I'll turn the volume up on the 227E and hit Start on the 250E. Once I start changing the values on the outer knob array, the pitches will change. Turn the small knobs to adjust the timing for each stage. To set loops, use the center edit value knob to select the stage to trigger the loop. Then press the set button and dial in the stage you wish to jump to. Press the set button again and adjust the loop counter. A value of A means always. Press the set button again to exit the loop editing mode. Loop counters associated with each stage can be nested to any level. We're going to focus on the time section now. I have set up a basic sequence with a couple nested loops. I initially have all the time value knobs set the same so the changes I make in this section are immediately apparent. To change the time range of a stage, press the edit button, turn the center knob to select the stage to be edited, and press the time range button to the desired value. Note that when cycling through, there is a blank option where no LEDs are lit. This is the option we'd use to sync to a MIDI clock through a Buchla 225E. More on that later. I'm going to make some quick time range changes, and we can hear the results. I can change the stage time knobs and adjust the time values within each stage's set time range. I can also quantize and interpolate time values per stage in the same manner. For detailed information on quantization values, consult the 250E section in the 200E manual. Again, to make the following demonstration more apparent, I'll now reset all the time range values to be the same, and turn off quantization and interpolation for all stages. We can scale the overall time, and apply a voltage to multiply by. In this case, I'm connecting a fluctuating random voltage CV output from a 266E source of uncertainty. Turn the time malt knob to scale. We can clearly see the effects of the random voltage upon the time. And again, we can adjust the stage array time knobs and change the time ranges. The time CV out gives us access to the voltages from the time knobs in the stage array. I'll connect the time CV out to the 261E timbre. I'll remove the voltage going to the 261E pitch so the time CV effect on timbre is more apparent.
The 250E can be synchronized to a MIDI clock sent via the 225E. This can be set on a stage-by-stage -stage basis. I've connected a MIDI cable from a laptop running Ableton Live to the 225E. The Pukla 200E internal bus provides the MIDI to the 250E. To set a stage to slave to the MIDI clock, assign the blank value to time range, which will automatically select quantize. I'm going to do this for all the stages. If stage 1 is set to MIDI sync, the 250E will respect MIDI start and stop messages from the sequencer and will return to stage 1 upon a MIDI start message. I'll hit play in Ableton Live and we'll see the 250E respond as expected. I'll change the BPM in Live and it changes accordingly on the 250E. I'll hit stop in Live and I'll hit play again in Live and the 250E starts at stage 1. When using a MIDI clock, the time malt knob and external voltage won't affect the clock division, but will affect the interpolation time. The stage array knob will set relevant clock divisions. Refer to the 200E manual for detailed clock division info. Moving on to the voltage section, we can see there is a second voltage in this section that we can assign and use. I'm going to connect the 250E CV output 2 to a 259E twisted waveform generator principal oscillator in to affect pitch. The 259E principal oscillator audio output is then sent to the 227E. I'll turn the volume up on the 227E. Press voltage 2. Note that you don't have to press edit first to switch between voltage 1 and voltage 2. Now changes we make to the outer stage array knobs will affect voltage 2. We can hear the change does not affect the voltage 1 value. Also note that we can change the voltage range for the stage value. Currently, this stage is set for all, meaning the entire voltage range of 10 volts. I'll sweep through the voltage range for reference. I'll now change the voltage range for this stage by pressing Edit, and then I'll press the Voltage Range button to set the value to 0 to 2. Now the entire range for this stage, for voltage 2, is 0 to 2 volts. Here's what it sounds like. So restricting the voltage range provides more precise control. 2 to 4, 4 to 6, 6 to 8, 8 to 10, and back to all. I'll go back to editing voltage 1, and on a stage-by-stage -stage basis we can quantize. A quick note that when the quantized LED goes red, this means that you are on the edge of a quantized value. You should adjust the stage value to keep it in the green. And we can interpolate as well. We'll now focus on the pulse output section. For this demonstration, I've zeroed out all the 250E CV values. I've connected the audio from a 259E twisted waveform generator and a 261E complex waveform generator into the A and B audio inputs of a 292E quad dynamics manager. The 292E mode for both channels is set to low pass. The audio then is sent to the 227E from the respective 292E audio outputs. I'm going to connect the all pulse output to the 292E channel A level CV input, which is driving dynamics on the 259E signal. The all pulse output generates a pulse at each stage. We'll now connect the 250E pulse output 1 to the 292E channel B level CV input, which is driving the dynamics of the 261E signal. We'll now set some stages to generate pulses on pulse output 1. Press edit and press the pulse output 1 button at the desired stages. we can hear the result. I'll connect the 250E pulse output 2 to the 261E principal oscillator CV input to affect pitch, and set stages to generate a pulse at pulse output 2. We'll now go over the 250E stage addressing section. Currently, the stage addressing mode is set to a blank value, which is indicated by unlit LEDs in that section, meaning that the 250E moves through stages in relative succession as we've seen thus far. When in continuous mode, the stage number is determined by the applied control voltage. 
we'll connect a fluctuating random voltage from a 266E source of uncertainty into the 250E stage addressing CV input. And we can see it driving the 250E. When in strobed mode, the control voltage is sampled, resulting in changes only when a pulse is applied. We'll connect the 250E pulse output 2 to the stage addressing pulse input. The offset control establishes the stage number for an input voltage of zero. Sensitivity to an applied control voltage is 0.625 volts per stage, with zero volts being stage one and 10 volts being stage 16. We'll look at the 250E external input section now. Again, I zeroed out all the 250E CV values. Voltage CV output one is connected to a 261E complex waveform generator principal oscillator CV input to drive its pitch. Voltage CV output two is connected to a 259E twisted waveform generator in the same manner. The audio for both go to the 227E. Voltages and times may be derived from external control voltage inputs on a stage-by-stage -stage basis. There are four inputs, A, B, C, and D. You can use an external voltage for each stage's large voltage knobs and or the small time knobs. Note that the external input voltage option can be assigned to voltage 1 and voltage 2 independently with different values for each. Referencing stage 1, we can see positions marked for both the large and small knobs that correlate with inputs A, B, C, and D. Meaning that if you assign a stage to react to external inputs, you can use the knob to determine which of the four possible external inputs it respects. I'll turn up the volume for the 261E on the 227E. I'm connecting a fluctuating random voltage from a 266E source of uncertainty to the 250E external input A. I'll assign voltage 1 for all stages to use external input. Press edit and then select the external input voltage button. Since all the knobs are already set in the A position, the external voltage is used. I'll set some of the stage's time to react to the external input A as well. Now I'm going to connect another fluctuating random voltage but with a higher probable rate of change from the 266E to the 250E external input B. I'll turn up the volume for the 259E. Select voltage 2 and assign half the stages to use an external input voltage. And I'll set some of the knobs to their B position to look at the B voltage. Others will remain in the A position, which will read from the A input. The fix button is a global setting that stores the current external input values as if they were knob settings, and so long as the button is active, ignores further dynamic changes in those inputs. We can see the nature of this setting clearly if we stop on a stage, make sure it uses an external input voltage, and turn the fix button on and off. We can see how the value is sampled. Now we'll look at the 250E mode section. I've connected a 223 tactile input port pulse output into the 250E start advance pulse input. I have it set up so that when I press a button on a 222E, a pulse is generated. The mode section offers several schemes for stage selection, which can be set on a stage-by-stage -stage basis. I'll press edit and set all the stages to pulse mode, which is indicated when none of the mode LEDs are on. A pulse applied to the start advance input or a press of the switch will advance the 250E to the next stage, as we can see when I repeatedly press the button on the 222E. Now we'll set all the stages to advance mode. Now the stages will advance automatically when the stage's time value runs out. Sustain mode. The stages will advance when the time value runs out. However, if a gate is applied, the stage will pause or sustain. When the gate goes low, the stage will continue to run based on its time value. So everything advances until I send the pulse. Once I release the button, the stages advance. Enable mode. This is the opposite of sustain mode. 
the stage will pause until a gate is applied. At this point, the stage will run based on its time value until the gate goes low again. Once I press the button, the stages advance. When I release, they pause. Stop mode. This will cause the sequence to stop on the selected stage. A pulse to the start advance input or a press of the button will continue the sequence. Pressing the stop button or applying a pulse to the stop input will also cause a stage to enter this mode. I'll set all the stages to advance, and then I'll set stage 9 to stop, and upon pressing start, the 250E will automatically stop on stage 9 until I either press start again or apply a pulse, which I'll do now. That concludes this Bukla 250E arbitrary function generator video. Thanks for watching.